Hey, 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 welcome to another Valley Forged QR code sign done. Today we're making a QR code sign. And uh, this is a really important skill to have, especially if you have a laser business. But even if you're just a seller, you need one of these. Makes life so much better. Instead of having business cards and all these other things that people just throw away, forget about, whatever... Uh, now you can just say, here's my contact information. They can take whatever they want. They can sign up right there. Not only do you need one of these, every store, every booth, they, everybody, they, they, every business needs one of these. So if you are someone who loves to do personal work like I don't. <laughs> I have been asked countless times to make these signs for people. And I always say, no, I, I think I did it one time and I just, it's just not my thing. But this is a really great idea for you if you're into that. But I'm going to show you how to make your own QR code signs are super, super simple. This is definitely not difficult. And luckily, Lightburn has made it really, really easy. So I hope you have Lightburn. And this is what it looks like. One of the things I'm going to say right away, I'm going to teach you how to do this. When you get your sign done in Lightburn and you are ready to make it, say you have a beautiful machine like I do, the Rolly Lasermatic MK2 3010. XW. <laughs> uh, I just got the XW uh, because I'm going to be doing some bigger things, which I'll be showing you soon. So like and subscribe. But uh, what a beautiful, beautiful machine. And I knew right away, you don't have to think about it when you send it. It's, it's going to get done. It's going to look good. So the file. What I have here is this full file and then also below it, I have a stand. Now, many of you, because a lot of you have bought my files before, you already have this stand. Uh, if you got the, this is fine, which only a few of you got, but uh, the American flag bundle, that has the stand as well. Uh, the laser cut mini fridge has the stand. So there are several of my files that have the stand and if not, I'm sure it is not that difficult to make. But it comes in handy for a lot of things. And the reason why I put a stand on my sign is because table space is important. And so I want to minimize the amount of space it takes, but I want to just be able to point people or if they find it on their own, a lot of people, you get busy and people will see it and they'll automatically just sign up or, you know, look you up. It works great. And this is just a basic, basic. You can take this and do so much more, make things much more interesting. But this is just how I do it, keeping it simple. And so the stand just holds it up. It's very wind resistant. It's not going to have an issue. Now I do put two little holes here so that if I want to hang it up, I can do that as well. But you don't have to do that. The important thing to remember on the stand, now you can resize this stand any way you want to. Just grab it by the corner and resize it and think, okay, well, it just needs a little bit of room between the bottom of the stand uh, here like so, so that it will lean back, right? You want it to lean back a little bit. It makes it less likely to flop over and easier to see. So that's all you really have to think about with the stand. Uh, size wise, as long as you resize everything at once, that's the important thing. Don't just resize the handle or something. So when you take the handle, you should be able to So I'm going to ungroup this and then I'm going to take the handle and you can bring that in and you can make sure that the height of these holes is literally a little bit bigger, just a touch bigger and it fits right in. What you can't account for is the width of these. 
right? So this is the important part when it comes to stands. You make sure you're in millimeters and that you have measured the width of your wood. Calipers are pretty awesome, but whichever way you do it, you see mine says five millimeters because I'm using five millimeter wood for my backing. Five, six millimeter wood, wonderful for the backing in my opinion uh, because it's just solid, right? It's going to sit solid. It's going to look solid. It's going to feel solid and that's nice. You're using three millimeter, it will work and it will work fine. But two things about five millimeter wood or three millimeter wood. If you're using that for this outside piece, then it's not going to have a lot of depth for that backing to fit into, right? So now I've got five millimeters of depth of this piece of wood for this to fit into, make it nice and snug. And then I'm going to glue it, of course. But yeah, make sure that these two are the width. So if you're going to change that, just make sure that this is unlocked so you're not changing the entire thing. And then you can change this to whatever you want. And it will see how that got bigger. And we'll go back down to five. And if you need to center it, make sure you take this out. And then you can... Uh, Put this on a line you could center this on I typically like to use one of these types of lines here and you could just go in and make sure that this is center center boom center so now everything's centered and then I would take it all again and regroup the whole thing so you can't mess it up uh boom so and then this is on a different layer this is on my dark red layer so i could just turn that off and only print what's on here again make sure the air is turned off for all of your engraving uh don't make that mistake like i just did i had the air on with the engraving and wood wise I hate Baltic birch. Uh, hate, strong word, but I rarely ever use it. For this, I thought, you know what? I'm going to need that contrast, so I'm going to use Baltic birch. And I have some six millimeter Baltic birch. I began using it, and I realized I just don't like the way it looks. So I went and went on to some maple. You want something with contrast. So I wouldn't try doing this with walnut, maybe cherry, but it's a QR code. You're going to need the contrast, right? So I'll get to the rest of that soon, but right now I just want to say how to do the QR code. Luckily, Lightburn has made doing the QR code so easy. It's ridiculous. So as long as you're doing this in Lightburn, you are happy. Go to create QR code, make it whatever size square you want to to start with. Go to whatever website that you want to bring it to paste it in there and hit OK. And then all you got to do is make sure that it is on a, an engraved layer. Very first thing that I would do is to just go into the preview, go over to it, put your phone on there and make sure it works. Very simple. You don't want to get too far in this process and realize that this thing isn't doing what it's supposed to do. It likely will. Lightburn is amazing. So now you've got this, trying to create another one. Uh, now that you've got your QR code, you can put your whatever it goes to right above it, like I did here. Your, make, your, make whatever ones you want and just line them up. Now make sure that this outside square, if you're gonna make one, I just thought it would look better, is on a line, not an engrave. Because what that might do is it might actually make this the opposite of what you want, which is what I did with my first sample. I, I did a sample just to make sure it had enough contrast that it would look good. But I had this outside line uh, square also as an engrave, and so it wouldn't work. 
One way to make sure of that is just to finish the entire sign, get it exactly how you want it, just like I do. This is exactly what I want. Go into the preview and then go ahead and test these out with your phone and make sure they're going to the places that you want before you start printing it out. Mine looked great. There's no guarantee though that because it's perfect here in the preview that once you make it, it's going to have the right contrast and look good. One thing about maple, it loves to get dirty. So that's why I have the air turned off, which I didn't do and was a terrible mistake, uh, is important because you, you know, you bl start blowing that dark smoke everywhere on maple. It loves to stick on there. So of course I did, you know, sand it all off and everything and used an eraser, but save yourself a lot of that time and energy. And once it's done and it looks clean, uh, get it sprayed down or put a coating on it, whatever you got to do to seal it. Make sure that no more dust can get into the wood itself or else you're going to have to re-sand again. So, but I think maple just looks a lot better than Baltic birch. So I de definitely went ahead and went with that. And I'm sure you've seen the final sign by now. I haven't. It's out, you know, getting a second coat of spray on it right now. But I've already done these before. So I'm pretty certain it's going to turn out fine. But once I did get it all printed out uh, on my laser... I rechecked again with my phone and made sure each one of these was going the place it wants. I mean, it'd be terrible to get this out to a show and then people say, well, I, this doesn't work. <laughs> Especially if you want to get orders from other people. You could even put something like, hey, you know, order this uh, sign and you'll probably get some orders. And not only that, the thing is, when you get orders from other people for a sign like this, now... They're likely, if they're going to need other signs or other things for their store, who are they going to come to? Yep, you. So it is a great idea. I'm already kind of as busy as I want to be right now, so not something I care about, but I think this is a great business idea. And like I said, every business needs it. And it is something that a laser, especially light burn, does just so fast. It's so nice. And if you have a... CO2 laser, you can really get some pretty fun with this, like creating a second layer that's in uh, clear acrylic or something, making your logo in clear acrylic with the mirror on the outside, you know, gold mirror. I, there's so many, or you could put a mirror here if you do earrings, you know, you can implement that. It's just so many ways that you could do this. It's brilliant. I just wanted something basic for my show next week. So this is what I'm doing. It's the whole reason I'm actually doing this because I needed one of these for myself. And I figure if I need one, maybe you do too. Now, I hope I'm not leaving anything out here. I think it's pretty simple. And if you do have any trouble, let me know. And uh, I will leave you with it making, uh, making it on my glorious machine. And uh, links below for everything I talk about and like and subscribe, all that kind of stuff. I will see you in the next one. Love you all.